So far we've written simple code. We've written the code together. Everything's worked out quite well. However, as we get more complex with our functionality, as we begin to write our own code outside of any tutorials that have been done, and especially as we begin to interact with the user more, we really need to learn how to catch and deal with errors in a dignified way. Ultimately, we want our function to never ever have errors. If it does have errors, be able to address those errors without the user even being notified or aware that there were some bumps in the source code in the background. There are times though that we'll even want to inform the user of an issue, that there was a problem, that this is where the problem was, and then deal with the error as best as we can but allow us the information or provides us the information that we can properly troubleshoot and correct the error down the road. Ultimately, never do we want our software to crash AutoCAD or any other application. So let's go ahead and see how to trap and address errors in our next exercise. We're going to go ahead and open up our project. Uh, it's in our exercise directory, chapter 3, and it's the 0304 solution that we're going to open up. Once we do that, we go to our Solution Explorer, and we're going to open up our initialization class, and we're going to work with some commands here. Uh, we're going to expand the commands, and if they're all not collapsed, what you can do is you can just right-click, and one of the nice features in the contextual menu under Outlining is Collapse to Definitions. And this will take and provide an easier means to view all of the different code under the routines or properties themselves. So we're going to expand out our li loops and we're going to make a change to this loop here. Now we already know the loop works, but we're going to add in a statement that will trap any errors that may occur in the loop. The statement is what's referred to as the try, catch, end try statement. Now this statement Notice I typed in try and it added the catch and the end try portion of the statement. Now what it does is any portion of the code that's between try and catch will run. If for any reason that code has a, an error, has some means that causes it to fail, it will fire the catch. It will then write all the error information to an exception object and then run any code between catch and end try. There's another option to this statement where we can add finally, and anything between finally and end try will run no matter whether or not try, the try portion of code was successful, or if there was an error that was trapped. And we're not going to use the finally portion, and so I'm going to remove that. We want to run this code, and then we want to build in a means to inform the user of where the issue was and what the issue was. So I'm going to call the AutoCAD application and from there call a routine that uh, will show an alert dialog. That dialog message that we want is to inform the user that there was an error, where the error was, write a new line, and then we're going to take advantage of this variable called ex. The ex is reading from an exception object. The exception object, this ex portion of the code, is not needed. We could remove everything past catch. ex as exception. The try, catch, in try statement would still work. But this variable is very useful if we want to understand better what the error is. That exception object has a lot of information about that error. And most of the time, what we're going to do is we're going to simply read the message of that error. And so I'm going to add that in. Already, we have stated, we know this code works. So we're going to force an error to occur. We don't normally code purposefully a means to throw an error. So this is probably not a good practice, but we're going to go ahead and do it because this allows us to be able to really test whether the try, catch, in try will work well. So we're going to throw a new exception. Now we want to throw an exception that is specific to AutoCAD. And so we're going to make sure it's not a system exception, but we're going to choose 
the Autodesk AutoCAD runtime exception. And if you're not sure from this list, you can always type it in as well. Now this exception requires a few different types of arguments. You could send no arguments at all, an error status, error status and message, or a few other things. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna just send it an error status. And that error status is going to be from this list here, from an enumerable list. And we're just going to choose one that's referred to as must be non-zero. And then the message, is the code is at its end. So when I gets to zero, it's counting down through the array. And when it gets to zero, it's going to throw an exception. And that exception is going to be caught. And then the user is going to be alerted that there was an error. And then provide the message at the end to the user. Let's go ahead and debug, test our code, compile it, run it, and see what happens. Once AutoCAD launches, we're going to go ahead and net load our compiled DLL. Make sure we're in the right exercise folder. So exercise chapter 3, 0304, bin, debug, and choose my first plugin. Now remember, we built this in the command called li loops. When we run it, it pops up a message and says, there is an error in li loops. The end. So this is the error, and this is where the error occurs. We click OK, and it ends the command in a dignified way. It doesn't crash, it doesn't give any other problems to the user, it simply ends the command in a dignified way. Another way that we can kind of test or debug our code as we're working through it is to use breakpoints. Now what we can do with breakpoints is I'm gonna come over here and click on the side and you see this little red dot, it's turned or added a new breakpoint with this code. And you can also add breakpoints from the debug menu drop down, choose new breakpoint and add them there. A breakpoint allows us to be able to kind of walk through the code line by line as we go through it. And so notice I haven't stopped debugging. So if I go back to AutoCAD and run the command again, is simply going to pause at that breakpoint. When it pauses, if the local window is open, uh, we choose this local window. Now, if the locals window isn't open, you can choose to add or show the locals window from the many different windows that are available here in the view dropdown. Now, if you don't see it, you can always come and choose other windows as well. You'll see the many different windows you can choose. Uh, but by default, the locals window is open and is along the bottom of your Visual Studio application. The locals window allows us to see the different variables and the values of those variables at that breakpoint. So right now, that variable i equals 5. The array object, here's all the values of the array object, and so on and so forth. And so if I hit continue, it will continue to loop through, and anything that was changed from the last time we paused will be in a different color. You can also not just use these breakpoints, but you can also use these different tools here to step into, out of, over, different functions that may be called, and so on. Uh, but we'll just continue to hit the Continue button, and you notice the number going down. When I get to zero, the next time it tries to go through the loop, it's going to hit this condition and it's going to throw an exception. So I'm at zero now. If I hit continue, the error message comes up. I hit OK, and the code ends. So two different ways that we looked at how we can deal with errors first. From the code behind, we looked at breakpoints. A great way to kind of walk through the code, see what the values are, see where our errors or issues might be. Another way is to add the try, catch, in try statements to our code, especially in areas where we're working with the user or where we may have more complex functionality.